Uh, thank you. Canon Kutosi. Where are you, Reverend Canon Kutosi? Our chief guest. No, I'm going to go Who is none other than Bishop Okabe, a member of parliament? Atari Mulala, Wabula, Omlavid is Okabe, Atenga, member of parliament. And team who organized this uh, breakfast prayer. And all the members of congregation who have gathered here to pray for the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Washaki Ahamada. I'm the RCC Mbali City. I want to apologize for coming late, Mr. Guest of Honor. But because there was some issue which was also more, more important of a suspected Ebola case in our regional referral hospital. So I had and find out what steps are being taken, although it is not a confirmed case. But it, it is just suspected. Uh, however, our people who don't believe in God rushed and picked the body. And even if I'm, as I'm here, I will request that I move still faster to ensure many people do not touch what we have not confirmed. However, I want to welcome you to Mbale City. I know you are a resident of Mbale City. But for gracing this, this occasion is something we cannot take lightly. Washaki Ahamada is my name. I'm the resident city commission of Mbali City. I want to thank Bishop Charo and team who made me part of organizing this function. And the reason I could not miss on behalf of government. I want to thank you for praying for the nation all this time. And I want to thank even our ancestors who made sure that even our national anthem is in respect of believing in God. Allow me still to thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, who, who is also the National Chairman of the National Resistance Movement, the ruling party. For really creating a uh, conducive environment for freedom of worship. It is along those lines that uh, Uganda has remained stable for the last almost 40 years now. And is the reason why Uganda is making strides of development wherever you turn yourself here. You can feel that Uganda is growing and developing. I think some five years ago here was a bush. But when you come here and nobody has told you that you are in Imbali, you may think you are in Kampala. So all this is because of your prayers, which has guided our head of state and government and our members of parliament to really plan for continuing with the development stability and growth in this country.
Nevertheless, those who don't believe in God have always demanded to have changes where God has not allowed. And that is to reach a time when I see change is inevitable, you will have it. So that's why I want to implore you to continue praying for this country. Because uh, okay, most of you here are younger people, but for those who are my age, you know where we came from. And those who wish that we, would, we, we should have change doesn't know what change without God's will uh, takes this country. Yeah, one, one simple example I want to give you is for our brothers and sisters in Libya. They had developed 50 times more than Uganda. But people who believe in Satan uh, induced them like Satan wanted to, to, to tell Jesus that you, if you are a son of God, jump from that highest point or turn this stone into food. And influence them to do the wrong thing, they are suffering. I don't think within the next 100 years they will have recovered from the suffering there. Libya, by the time those people deceived them, was developed that the power was free. You could just have power in your house, no be fear at the fuel pump was free. Uh, having a home was free. And even when you didn't have a job, you were assured of a salary every month. But people who forced Libya to have change without the will of God Plundered it into a suffering, they will never recover. I think within my lifetime I will not see them recover. Today, Libya, which was developed, their people were aware of. Now, ask to risk getting on the ship in excess numbers which causes the ship to drown. Gracing just to go and wash children nappies in Europe. Women and the men underpants in Europe. Uh, utensils rotten for them just to get food. It's because they did not believe in the Almighty Allah but they were overpowered by Satan and took a decision which is haunting them for life. So through the guest of honor and on behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, I want us to continue praying for the country that it will get any change through the will of the Almighty. That we shall remain stable like we are and then the country will uh, I want to thank you. You prayed for this city and, this, and the region as a whole. When we suffered from a drastic disaster which hit our city. Uh, for you religious leaders, you know that all our holy books teaches us to respect the environment. That's why even when God created the first man, 
He put him in a conducive environment. And he enjoyed life, although along the way again, Satan uh, deceived him and committed sins which we are also suffering By that should be a signal to make you accept the government policy now and the uh, and the appeal that we should protect our natural resources. Because the, the disaster we suffered was because of human error. For me, when I grew up in Ebugisu here, you could not approach a river and see water with your naked eyes. Except if you have you have put aside you have you have, you have pushed through the, 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 the grass is, is when you would see water. And that water was ever clean like you see that water in the, in the, in the Why? Because the, 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 the landscape, the environment was intact. But when it rains here like now there is no soil which it can erode and go to the river. But when we began uh, disobeying the law of nature put in place by the Almighty God, we began looking for money in all courts that we even cultivated up to the river banks and destroyed them. We also disorganized the mountains which had a mountain cover. And all our wetlands, we turned them into sources of income, which is temporary and is the reason we are paying the price. So like how, how our holy books tells us that even if you have committed a sin, repent. I want to appeal to you, my fellow countrymen here, that we should repent and now go back and restore the environment and protect it jealously. For the to come when government is willing to ensure that if you build in a wetland or in a, near the rivers or in the mountains where there are disaster risks, it is willing to give you, I think, my honorable member of parliament, they have passed a, a law or a policy to ensure those vacating those areas are going to be supported. <laughs> That's why as a city we don't now allow anybody to cultivate in the wetland or to construct in the wetland. If you do so, we shall stop you. The only person we are looking at until we harvest what you planted long time ago, harvest it, move away, don't return to that place. Uh, lastly, I want to thank you for praying for us and I want to request you that you continue praying for us because moral decay has come with the sad by the, by, 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 by the effects. Uh, nowadays, if you are not careful, even if you are a religious organization, the rich, can't, rich people from, from Europe, they will come, I want to help you to, to, to build a church here, I want to give you money to develop this and that. But make sure we also have your team members who will be coming for us to also get lessons. Not all that money and the lessons they, that may come with are holy. I want to thank Church of Uganda. On this and the Muslim community, you stood firm. That we better go without funding 
But we shall not temper with disorganizing and disobeying God by go getting uh, immorally uh, derailed. I always ask myself if a man was marrying a man before he was born and a woman was marrying a woman before he was born, would have I been there? And I, and I don't think those people there also would be there, these ones who are trying to debate us. So let's say no. On the city we are faced with some pockets of insecurity through also moral decay. Our younger men are engaged in taking uh, illicit drugs, smoking bang, taking in the, in the process they began stealing from people who are using their energy and we have waged a war against them and I know we are in line with the, uh, uh, the Almighty's commandment. But if you steal, God will punish you. But he has also given us responsibility away from the Kaisari group that we should also punish them here. So we are punishing them. And I want to appeal to you, if you have a child, if you have a relative who is engaged in those, tell him you should stop it. Because even if we came to that tent and found one person taking bang, we shall take the whole, the whole tent. Because it means you are supporting it. Imagine, when you also go back, you are part of it. So until you explain yourself, we shall be disorganizing you. The only continent remained with the life is Africa. The rest are living just on risks all through. Actually, when you see the disaster which struck them, this one of ours is not a disaster even. If it is flood, the, the, the whole cities, the whole country floods and people die. But they are developed. They developed using resources they depleted from our, our, our continent here. Before we got in, in, independence, they even enslaved us to go and work in their factories that they are developed. The word you are hearing, it's out of struggle for resources. It is oil they are fighting over and some other mineral resources. Everyone wants to have a pipe to his country. But when His Excellency, the President of Uganda and the Parliament say we should also have our pipeline here to go and get us money so that we can develop the country. We are not stealing anyone's resources, it is ours. They say we should, we should not develop it. Let us develop it. If you pray we develop it within the next 10 years, we shall not be even needing to hear what they say, except if it is the right thing. We must uh, defend our country, we must defend our resources and defend our morals so that we are not attacked by those satanic nations which spreads. Guest of all, I want to thank you. We are now independent. That's why when you look around, you cannot get anyone walking on barefoot.
When these colonialists were here, we were working on bare food. You could not get a shame to be on food in town. But today, because we are now sustaining our independence, if we walked on foot in town, people will think you have a wrong thing. When I grew up, putting on a butter slipper, and then you passed everywhere doing butter, butter, they would say, hi, rich man. But it right here, they will chase you. You go back to the bathroom. Why are you moving with this? We have made a strike. Let us defend it. Let us pray for it. Let us even pray for His Excellency, the President of the Uganda, the whole government, the Parliament, all our forces, and the country at large, that we continue striving until we reach where God wants us to be. Let us increase prayers. Because that freedom we have, you remember there is time you could not even sit here praying. All those are indicators of, of development and also being independent. I thank you. I wish you a good independence celebration tomorrow. I will say all this for God and my country. Thank you for this.